one thing that you may have noticed so far is that the harmony and the melody are intimately linked with each other. You know, they are essentially made from the same thing. This is true not just of the music that we've been looking at so far, but it's pretty much true of all music that I know of. For the most part, the harmony and the melody need to be coherent with each other. So one method that we've found to do this is that we can actually create the harmonies by looking at the scales. In other words, we can create the harmonies from the same thing that we would use to make the melodies in the first place. Now another phenomenon occurs, which is that when we hear a chord, we also can do it the other way. In other words, we can kind of hear what type of scale might fit with that chord. I'll give some good examples of that in the coming slides. Of course, jazz is not any different than other styles of music. The linear part of the music has to fit with the harmonic part of the music or else it doesn't sound right. Every note that a player plays whether they're playing the lead, or whether they're playing a background part, or whether they're playing the bass, or whether they're playing the chords, all of the notes have to line up vertically as well as horizontally in order for the music to make sense. So here's an example to demonstrate how this might work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a D minor 7th chord, the notes D, F, A, C, and I'll play against it a D Dorian scale. All right, now I'll play the same D minor seventh chord and I'll play an A flat Ionian scale with it. Now you can notice that the Dorian scale sounds a lot better, in, you know, in most definitions of better. All the notes that are in the chord, D, F, A, and C, are also in the scale. And this turns out to be a critical um, relationship. You can see that here. In the A-flat Ionian scale, only two chord tones are actually present. And not only that, but four of the notes that are in the scale, which is you know more than half of the scale, actually clash with the root and the fifth of the chord. So in other words, the D and the A in the chord have notes that, that clash severely with them within the A-flat major scale. So you can see that here. The A-flat and the B-flat are semitone related to the A. The D-flat and the E-flat are semitone related to the D. And so when we play them against each other, we get the sound of those dissonances. At the most abstract level, if we omit context, because context does have a big role in this whole process, but if we do omit that for now, any scale that contains all the notes of a given chord will fit to our ear. You know, we, we will be able to accept that the chord tones are present and that the other notes can be heard as perfectly viable passing tones in between the chord tones. So let's try that out. So if we have a D minor seventh chord, we'll stick with that for a while. The notes D, F, A, C, we have to figure out which scales have the notes D, F, A, C. And we know D Ionian does not because it has an F sharp and a C sharp. You know, most of the scales will have one note that's different at least, but what we know for sure is that the, the Dorian scale will work. We've heard that already, so I won't give an example of that. Let's try another one. D Aeolian. So this scale has most of the same notes, actually. The one difference is the sixth scale tone. But it still does have the D, F, A, and C, and so it should fit. Here's what it sounds like. All right. Let's try this one. Phrygian. The Phrygian scale starting on D also has D, F, A, and C.
Here's another one. It's lesser known. This would be the, if I make a, a scale from the second scale degree of a melodic minor scale, then we get this one. Uh, another way to write the scale would be it has a flat 2 and a flat 3 and a flat 7. This scale sounds like this. Alright, here's another one. This scale is called a D minor pentatonic scale. And again, it does have all the, lo the notes from the original chord, D, F, A, and C. It just has one extra note, the G, and it should sound just fine. And lastly, we'll try something a little more exotic. So it turns out that the D octatonic scale, starting with a semitone, actually does have the D and the F and the A and the C, so it should fit. So here's what it sounds like. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is add the ninth. So I add the E natural, which is the ninth that goes with a minor, uh, uh, the D minor chord. And this creates some issues with some of our scales. So for example, the Dorian and the Aeolian will fit fine still because they have an E natural in them, which is the same as the ninth. The Phrygian and the melodic minor mode that we were using there and the octatonic have E flats and that will create an unpleasant um, clash with the chord. Here's, uh, I'll play one of those. Here's the Phrygian scale. So you can hear that there's really kind of an uh, guess unpleasantness between the harmony and the scale. Whenever we play that E flat it just sounds out of place. D minor pentatonic though solves this problem in an interesting way because it just doesn't have a ninth at all and so there's no note for it to clash with so it still sounds just fine. When we add the 11th to the minor chord, so making a D minor 11th, um, we notice that of all our remaining scales, the Dorian, Aeolian, and the Pentatonic, they all have the same 11th, so we can pretty much guess that that won't create any kind of problem, because the chord tone, G, is actually in the scale. If we add the 13th, though, we get rid of the Aeolian scale because the 13th that goes with a minor chord would be a major 13th, in this case a B natural, which is present in the Dorian scale but not in the Aeolian scale. Again, the minor pentatonic will still work probably because we leave that note out. So the note that would clash, in other words the B flat, is just omitted entirely and uh, we can see that still in this chord, the D minor 13th, all of the notes in the D pentatonic scale are still in the chord. The D, the F, the A, the C, and the G. Another possibility of studying this material is to start from the point of view of the scale and figure out if I take this particular scale what chords can I derive from it and therefore which chords will, will this scale fit with. So in this case let's try a D Lydian scale. So we've got D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, and C sharp. So if we take the basic triad we get a D major chord. If we add the 7th C sharp, then we get a D major 7th chord. If we add the 9th, we get a D major 9th. If we add the 11th, 
something we have to make an alteration because remember that in uh, for a major 11th chord or when we make that chord from the Ionian scale and it would be a perfect 11th which would be G so in this case the note in the scale is a G sharp which is the one we have to use and so we have to refer to that as the sharp 11th Again, when we make the 13th, we still have to maintain the sharp 11th because that's the note that's in the scale. So here's what this uh, scale sounds like with the 13th chord. All right, let's try the same thing, but let's use a Mixolydian scale. So if we take the basic triad, we get a D major triad. Again, the implication here is that if we find a D major triad somewhere, then the D mixolydian scale is one of the possible scales that we could play that would match up nicely with that chord. Okay, if we make the seventh chord, we get a D F sharp A C, which is a D seventh chord known in common practice as D major minor 7. If we add the ninth, we get a D ninth, D F sharp A C E. If we add the 11th, we get D F sharp A C E G. And finally adding the 13th. So again, if we look at how this might work, if we are looking at a piece of music and it says the chord that is in this place in the music is a D 13th chord, then we know that the melody and the scale that we might use for improvisation in that spot would be a D mixolydian scale. Actually, that what we can say is that that's one of the scales that might work. There might be others, but for sure that one will work. All right, let's try it with another scale. Let's try it with a melodic minor scale, because this gives us a few alterations from our normal Okay, so the D, F, and the A would create a D minor chord. D, F, A, C sharp is a variation from the normal minor 7th chord. So what we have to do in this case is we have to say it's a D minor chord, but it has a raised 7 or a sharp 7 compared to what it would normally be. This chord here, D, F, A, C sharp, E, would be a D minor ninth and again with a raised 7. Next one would be a D minor 11th also with a raised 7 and finally D minor 13th with a raised 7. So again if you saw in the harmonization of some jazz tune that you were playing a D minor 11 with a sharp 7 then this scale is one of the scales that would fit with that chord. All right, here's a mode that we're familiar with a little bit. The f this would be the fourth mode of the melodic minor scale, or the sharp four flat seven scale. So in this case, the triad is a major triad. So we would get a D major. In this case, the chord made from the root third, fifth, and seventh would be a D7 chord. If we make add the ninth, it's a D ninth chord. Nothing changes here. And when we get to the D11th, though, remember that the the dominant seventh chords are based on the Mixolydian scale, which has a perfect fourth in it instead of a raised fourth. And so the eleventh would be a perfect eleventh. So because this chord has a raised eleventh, we have to show that in the chord symbol. D ninth with a sharp eleven. Here's a D thirteenth with a sharp eleven. All right, this particular mode here, I think, is an interesting case um, for a couple of reasons. And it has to do with the, uh, the fact that the fourth of this scale is actually a diminished fourth. It's the only uh, scale that we have in the diatonic modes, anyway, that has a diminished fourth. But what's interesting about a diminished fourth is that when we play a diminished fourth, it sounds an awful lot like a major third. We can make a D, F, 
C chord, that would be three notes out of a D minor seventh chord. Or we could make a D G flat C chord. If I respell the G flat as F sharp, we would get D F sharp C. And those would be three notes out of a D dominant chord. And so we can really hear it either way. So one thing that we can do is enharmonically spell a number of these elements in the chord. So if we, if we think of the F instead as an E sharp, then that means that the E in this chord could be a flat 9, which would be E flat, or a sharp 9, which would be E sharp. We can think of the G flat as a G flat or the fourth scale degree, or we can think of it as an F sharp, which would sound like a third. Again, the, the next scale degree, which would be the fifth, could either be an A flat or it could be a G sharp, which would make it sound like a sharp fourth or a sharp eleventh. And then the B flat, we could think of either as a thirteenth, a flat thirteen, or we could think of it as a sharp fifth, A sharp. So what's interesting about this is that depending on how we spell the notes and how we voice the chord, the harmony, we can actually accommodate all of these possible alterations of a dominant chord. So therefore this scale then would fit with most any um, dominant chord that has alterations in it, unless of course it has a perfect fifth in it. All right, finally, I'd like to look at one interesting little trick and some of you will grasp the significance of this immediately and realize, wow, this is a, an awesome trick. And some of you may have a little bit of trouble with it, but that's okay. There's many ways of getting around the, uh, these issues. Okay, so one possibility that we might use for a G, Dor uh, G minor 7th chord would be a G Dorian scale. And for the C 7th chord, we could use a C Mixolydian scale. For the F major 7th chord, we could use an F Ionian scale. There are other possibilities for these, but I just picked those three because they have special relationship to each other. So if we compare the scales, so the G Dorian and the C Mixolydian and the F Ionian, here would be the G Dorian, here is the C Mixolydian, and here is the F Ionian. We can see that they have exactly the same notes. So in other words, if I'm playing my instrument, let's say I'm playing the saxophone, and I'm playing a G Dorian scale, then I can switch over to playing a C Mixolydian scale by essentially doing nothing, because I just keep playing the same notes again. And so I don't, in my mind, I don't have to think, oh, I need to switch scales over here. I just can keep playing what I'm playing in the G Dorian scale. And what causes the scale to change is the harmony. So actually when the keyboard player changes from playing a G minor 7th chord to a C 7th chord, our ear switches over to the, G mix, or the C Mixolydian scale. But the player does not have to do that. This is a wonderful trick. This actually works because those three chords can actually be thought of functionally in a key, in, you know, as the two minor seven, five, seven, one, seven, in the same key. And of course, that key can be represented by a single traditional key signature, which means they have exactly the same notes in them.